Uh, this is quite a good crowd. Thank you so much for coming. Um, let's get started. Congratulations, Ron Earl Evan, for your Golden Globe Gold win. <laughs> Thank you for your Page Choice Big Circle win. Thank you. You did us proud, and both of you for your SAG nominations. It's a pretty amazing thing. So, Netflix hit over a billion hours viewed. I don't think we're including this on what it just happened. So, this is just on Netflix. In the first month, it was a phenomenon in 175 countries. So, I just want to know now that we've done this and you all have been acclaimed, how does it feel? How does it feel to be a part of something that has made a bit of television history? <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. Um, and thank you for coming. Uh, it feels amazing uh, to know that you were a part of storytelling that went around the world a couple of times, you know, um, and to be able to form relationships, first personal and professional, um, with the likes of this cute thing right here. Um, yeah, it was just amazing because you you didn't know that was going to happen. We entered in trying to roll up our sleeves and unpack this work. And uh, you know what I mean? Went home with heavy hearts and tears in the corners of our eyes. And then the next thing you know, it was like, wait, what just happened? But Denise, you knew this was going to happen when you were seven, right? Uh, what, what? I, I didn't know this part was going to happen. What, what Paris is speaking to is the very first time we were talking about when people enter the business and why. And some people enter because they want to be famous. You know, it wasn't my story. I just wanted to be a part of great storytelling. And even as a little girl, I was on Hollywood Boulevard with my dad and we were looking at the stars and I look up and I see this guy and I'm like, daddy, that man is on TV and I know it. And um, he said, baby, that's Ed Asner. So I walk up to him and I was like, sir, I know you are on TV and I'm gonna be on TV too one day and my name is gonna be right here on this ground. And he was like, yeah, kids, ground. <laughs> and he was walking away and I was yelling, remember my name! <laughs> and when I was blessed to get my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, thank you. Guess who came to my ceremony? Hey, 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 hey. Well, I came to my ceremony. to your ceremony. Yes, he did. Now, I, mean, I know you love awards. Why don't you talk about the joy you receive from you there? I, I, I just feel incredibly grateful. I, you know, everybody worked so hard on this series, and um, I just feel incredibly grateful. It's a very surreal experience. One of the things that you uh, always show me whenever you said, you know, blessed to do this is you have so much humility. And in a way, I think you don't recognize your own genius sometimes. I mean, there is something going on in Evan Peters that I'd like to figure out too. <laughs> I'm very nervous today. Well, well, let's just talk for a minute. Just a little, I, I really want to talk about the sandwich scene. I don't know, you guys just watched it, okay? That scene was 7 minutes and 35 seconds long. I timed it last night. Sheesh. And it's just the two of them, and that's the really, that's sort of the main big scene you had in the entire 10 episode. Process. So Evan, you get that scene, you read it. What did you immediately start thinking about? I have to start memorizing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, uh, it, I was very excited. Nisi and I had some very quick scenes. Intense, but very quick. Um, so I was very excited to get to be able to work on uh, you know, a five-page scene with, with you. Uh, so I was, I was excited and immediately started working on it. But were you anything that you know, were you just, it's so cool, I get to bring her a sandwich or she went her age? Or did you just think, how are we going to do this? It was, to me, it was, uh, the intentions of the scene were tough. I, it was, um, it was, he, he really wants her to take back the complaint, but um, I think he also knows that she won't. Uh, so he wants to try to punish her in some way. Um, and even if she does, he still is going to punish her with that. Um, but uh, but what I love about the scene is that is that Nisi's character Glinda uh, gets to take away all of his power. You see him him struggling. You know um, what normally he would do, he can't do in this situation. So he's 
trapped and it's, it's, it's checkmate. So um, it's a beautiful scene to see Glenda have all of that power to stand up to him and he has no other choice but to walk away and, and get out of the, the room. So uh, I, I love it's, that scene. It's so interesting because I feel like in that scene, it was Glenda trying to give Jeffrey her best poker face. Yeah. Because at the core, you know, as an artist, the charge, once you read it on the paper, was how do you balance being uh, the most afraid you've ever been in your life, but to try to stand up as if, you know what I mean? And inside yourself, you can hear your knees knocking, you can hear your heart beating, and you think it's so loud that it's audible, you know? But you have to put that face on and step on that fear. But I want to, it's, it's a thin line because you want the audience to know you're afraid. You know what I mean? You want them to know your truth, but not the person who's opposite you to know your truth. So I, I felt like I was tap dancing on a Cheerio. <laughs> and also, I, I was there that day. I didn't direct that scene. I was Jennifer Lynch, but I was there that day, and, and I was banned from the set. And that rehearsal took a couple hours. I remember Ryan was there, and Jen Lynch, the director, was there. And so, in that conversation, what did you discover? Bring, bring us inside of that, because you must have gone back and forth about how the scene would be done. Or... You know, I just remember Ryan coming in and saying. I want to be here for this. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, oh, no, get the pressure. Because he didn't get around. No, and then he, and and then he showed up and was like, do it. I want to see it. <laughs> and we were like, oh, my God, please don't tell him I did an impression of him. <laughs> I want to be in his next well, move. Maybe too late. I want to be in his next move. Um, but I just remember that was the thing that made me be like, oh, God. You know what I mean? When the person who has crafted all of this is standing before you and, and basically saying, now act. you like, uh, okay. <laughs> no remember, pressure. Evan, do you remember any of that back and forth? I, I, honestly, I don't remember a lot of, I, I remember him watching it. We ran it a few times. I think he, he, he really didn't have that many notes. It was more about sort of where we would be maybe and having it be a standoff. And I think he just wanted to make sure that, uh, I guess we were doing what he wanted, but, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, he gave us the creative freedom to really yeah. play around with it. So. But there's also a marvelous, it's almost like a chord of tension between the two of you. At the end of the scene, when you're standing up to each other and we get to see that little quiver there's a back and forth, there's, I, I, I don't know if you felt it, it's almost a call and response yeah. of emotion happening there. And, and, and Jeffrey goes from chillingly, sort of evil, like I could kill you in this minute, and suddenly the smile blooms, and then you try to interpret that. I mean, how does that work? I, I don't know about the alchemy about that. There's something that's not just happening on the page, but with each of you, but between you, that's really interesting. I feel like, for me, part of my um, process is to be very, very present with the person that I'm working with. Because you could go home and you could try to pull all your tricks out of a bag. And then you get there and based on what the person is giving you, your tricks may not work. So you gotta respect that part of it and know that it is, it is an exchange of energy and that sometimes you know, my, my better half calls it leaving room for magic. Everything can't be so uh, strict and rigid and formulated in your process that you don't leave room for those things because it wasn't even on the page that when he walks out, um, my reaction, you know, but that it was almost like she was holding her breath the whole time. But I was only able to find that because I was present in the exchange with what Evan was giving me, so. And Evan, for you, I mean, is it, is it, a, is it a dance? Are you gonna do what you're gonna do? How, how, how do you feel your way through something like that? That's a good question. It's, it's, a, it's a, I think it's both. I think I, I feel like sometimes I, I come there with an idea and a plan and things. I mean, you know, I'm always asking for, <laughs> he has a plan. Sarah Paulson taught me, she's like, always ask for one more. 
Or a tank more. Or yeah, a tank more, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess there's this idea of chasing after that and wanting it to be that way, but um, it is sometimes futile, and I think that uh, it, it, you're absolutely right. It, one of the first things that I ever learned is that you have to be in the moment, and um, I think it can be so scary. It, it, uh, one of the very first acting classes I ever went to, the, the coach had to stand on a chair and jump off of it, and he was like, that's what acting is supposed to feel like. And it's crazy because I, I really did chase after these ideas of what I thought maybe it should be, uh, and particularly in a scene with Richard Jenkins in episode four at the diner, I was really, really struggling to get what I wanted to do there. And he, he was very helpful in sort of explaining, re-explaining that you have to go with what's in the moment regardless of what it, what it is and if it feels wrong and you're terrified and oh my God, what is it gonna be? I don't know. He, he goes, it's so much better to go with what is in the moment. So. Um, that was a huge lesson for me, and I, I carry that with me throughout shooting. And, and he said it can really feel like you're free falling, and that reminded me of that very first acting class that I had that did that. That's great. And now, Evan, I'm going to stick with you for a second because I want you to talk about the most memorable, fantastic, interesting, really deep shit that Nisi did in this series. What is your favorite scene <laughs> of these? There's so many. I, 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 it was the first thing that I did after I watched the series, I called Ryan and I said, Nisi is phenomenal in this yes. series. Yes! Really, really well phenomenal in this series. Um, uh, two scenes come to mind, and one is the one with Jesse Jackson, where you're breaking down. Um, it is gut-wrenching, and you see all of your pain in that moment. Um, and also, in, in the hallway with the cops, and you're screaming and, and so emotional and so upset that uh, they call, you called and they didn't listen. And, and that to me embodies the whole message of the series. And it was just absolutely beautiful the work that you did. Yeah. And Lisa, you know, as you watch the series, where, the, where do you think are those moments that you can't forget? I, oh, the magic for me, was all of the moments of trying to put the lid on the pot. You know, the, the, you, you saw the frustration, the anger, him wanting to do what he wanted to do, but anytime you got in a situation where you were challenged or it wasn't about to go your way and you had to try to figure out how to get out of all these, um, you know, situations and sweet talk to cops and fast talk to people and be charming, but all the while I'm like, what is he thinking? You know what I mean? How can I, you know what I mean? So I enjoyed those moments. And one in particular, when we were in the hallway and I called your name, I said, excuse me, excuse me, you kept walking. And I said, Jeff, and you slow turned around. I said, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> because without doing a lot, you did the most. You know, and it's those moments when you can just have a look on your face or a presence. Very soft spoken, very docile, never raised his voice. But when you said, I threw it out and I told you what I said, and then I forget what I say, but you took one step towards me. It was a tiny step. But it felt so aggressive, even though it was panissimo. And it made Glenda step back and say, well, let me clutch my pearl back. You know, what's going on? So I, I love the intensity that you would bring and these little moments where you would say so much while saying so little. Thank you. I love that. And after that, I in, in episode six, when you had to bring money, you were going to contribute to the fund to search for someone that you had just murdered. <laughs> that was very difficult for you. And you worked that, and there was something you were going for. And I'd say, honestly, I didn't see it, which is this is why I love actors, because a lot of times they're reaching for something that even the director and even the writers don't imagine. And I just had to let you keep going and let you keep trying to find something. It's a very complicated emotion that you would show up and walk up to the family and put that money in. And every take I looked at, there was something going on in your eyes. There was a play 
happening in there, and I know it's just what your process was, and it was worth it. So I would do all those tapes, that's all I have to say, because it's worth it. <laughs> well, you know what, what I would say about a lot of tapes, I always try to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Just because when the, when, you know, when you get in the edit, mm -hmm. you need options. So I always like to find little things that I can do different in each take, just in case within the whole play, something fits better, you know, than the other, than 15 takes of me doing the same dumb thing. <laughs> and I know you guys might be interested, you may not have read other things, but about your preparation for these parts. Um, Evan, you're known as someone who prepares a lot. How do you prepare to be the most gruesome, ruthless mass killer known to man and still have a normal life? I mean, what was your, <laughs> what was your process at home working on this life to get there? That's a good question. Um, I think I just, initially, I just really approached it as uh, a, a psychological uh, study, a research on I'm trying to learn, uh, you know, I read all the books and articles and timelines, confessions, psychology reports. I really tried to learn the history and get the facts right, but then also figure out why he would do something like this. Can you tell us? No, I, I don't. I, you know, he, you know it's inter the one thing that I did find that was sort of, find that was sort of a key to unlocking him was that he, he was, uh, you know, you see in his interviews that he has this form of regret probably nowhere near what you or I would have, but he, he uh, is really confused about why he did what he did and understands that it was wrong and tried to self-medicate with alcohol, um, but ultimately chose to cross over the moral code that you or I have and uh, commit these um, atrocities. Uh, and But it, it it started somewhere, but it he called it the long slide down. So it, it, it really deteriorated into a compulsion that he couldn't control anymore and completely lost himself and it just uh, you know, borders on evil. So it's a, it's a very, it, it, to me it was just really about learning all of that, trying to understand that and then sort of plotting out the deterioration of, of him um, into this. Over time. And, and then Bernice, since you're based kind of on a couple of characters, we made sort of a composite character that Glenda became, but you were the voice of the victims. And this show, from the beginning of the show, through this episode, to the end, you are one of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims, and you are the one standing up for them and giving them agency in that. So how did you prepare, knowing that that's, that's the role, not only would you play in this series, but that Glenda played, or the, the people who were Glenda played in their real lives? Right, well, First of all, uh, Paris, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a black woman. Oh, are you? Which means that as a lot of times I have not been listened to, I have not been heard, I, you know what I mean? So I always try to start at what I have in common with the person. That's how I begin. I don't care who it is I play. I'm like, well, where can I find some commonality between myself and this person? so that when I thread this needle, this, this tapestry is going to come across and it's going to be rich and it's going to be real. Um, so I started there. And then I tried to find as much information. You know, Ryan's team was really great at giving us everything they could find. Um, and, you know, every little article that I could find was so penissimo. Just some little blurb here, a little thing there. You know, there wasn't a lot of meat on the phone. So you gotta dig and dig and dig to figure this out. And then, you know, hearing the real live 911 call, you know, um, after the Conorac baby was taken uh, back into Jeffrey's house, uh, it's heartbreaking, you know? And so I, I just try to, uh, one, put myself in that situation. Two, find common ground between me and that character. Three, get as much research as I can. And four, pray to the Most High to magnify my gifts so that I could, I could, you know, leave it on the screen. That you did. Can we talk for a moment about joy? Well, thank you, sir. You're right. times that were fun. I know it's hard to imagine, but was there was there uplift in the moment? Did you find any joy in this? In the in the movie? In making the movie. Um 
Well, I will tell you this. My real life daughter played my daughter in the movie. Uh, she was the little spicy one who took the camera and threw it on the ground and stepped on it. That little thing. She belongs to me. And so because this material was so weighty and, and, and so painful, I spent a lot of days teary-eyed, you know, or very emotional on set. But when kids are around, they don't know. You know what I mean? They are just like so it's so above their heads and so I'm in the corner I'm trying to get myself together my daughter's like hey mom want to do a TikTok? <laughs> like, girl what? And the next thing you know it's two o'clock in the morning we ticking and talking and I don't know what people are doing and it brought such a lightness to the space for me and I needed it. I, 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 I was clinging on to it like a life raft because it was those little moments of having her with me that were really a gift. And Evan, did you find any bright days? I, you know, I, it was, well, I loved working with you. I, it was really fun, and uh, we, we also, uh, I don't know if you felt this way, but I, I really felt like it was just such a, um, just sometimes after we would shoot stuff, I would feel, with the crew there and everybody busting their ass and working really hard and really quickly and, and dealing with double up days, triple up days, you know, all sorts of things, like, at the end of one of those days where it was incredibly difficult, it did bring joy. I felt like we did. We, we all worked together really hard, and you gave me a million takes, and it was just, it was so, uh, that was, it was an incredible feeling. It really was. And I, I have to give you props here in this, in this space of actors, because with Ryder Burford, who played Tony in episode 106, that was his first acting job. He had not, he had, he'd only been on a reality television show before this. You took such great care of him, and that to me made me totally like Evan Peters stand forever. Because you can also be completely involved in what you have to do, but by taking care of him, you elevated both of them. And I just thought, that's a lesson I would love to see yeah. more often, because that, that to me yes. is stand forever. And it changes his life, it changes his mind, it changes his performance, and we got to see that, you know, you know, there can be light in this dark. So to me, that's one of the things that I put on to Well, there were vibes in, with regards to that because you took care of him, I took care of you, my daughter took care of me, you know what I mean? It was just like this, it, it just kept going. It kept going, and so, you know, but it starts at the top. Brian Murphy. Well, he's the one who cast us all in this. Okay, we only have a few more minutes, but I did want to get to them. I have so many other questions, but I have to race through them. I did want to talk about what was most difficult for you. What was the most challenging moment or scene in this, and how did you accomplish it? I mean, there's a lot that was thrown at you in these episodes. What was the most, the toughest thing that you had to do? Oh, um, well, you know, for me, I would probably say the hardest thing or the most uh, emotional for me personally was when I had to go to um, Conrad's funeral and sit with his father. Um, it is not the natural order of things that parents bury children. Um, my only brother was murdered in 1993 and I watched my mother like a hawk and that pain and that grief is something that if you, you you have to be in it to know it. And so to sit in that scene, as soon as I walked in and the mother was wailing and I had to look at that father and say, I tried. I tried to get this baby back, you know, and to feel culpable in the fact that I did, I was, I was not successful. It was just, it broke my heart. It brought that that broke that broke Nisi's heart, you know. Glenda was feeling the way she was feeling, and I was right there next to her, piling on. That that one was hard. And then for you, is there something that stands out? Uh, it was all pretty hard, um, but I the Conorak stuff was incredibly difficult to shoot and uh, very scary to shoot and. Uh, I was a very, I was very relieved when that episode was was completed. Yeah, that was very difficult for the crew also. Yeah. Just because it's it's something no one really wanted to see, and 
we had to shoot it in a way that was respectful to the, to the actors. At the same time, it's, it is the whole of Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, just from, from our side also, we were the first people to see these performances, and I have to admit, we were somewhat floored and emotionally destroyed many times over. Because for every scene that you see, there are 20 to 30 times that it was shot in different angles over and over again. And we were blown away. The one thing I will say is that I am so grateful that now people are aware of who these victims were. Because for a long time, we just knew Jeffrey Dahmer and that he killed a bunch of people. But who are these people? And I'm grateful that they were able to be unpacked and, and delivered to the world in such a way that you understand the depth, the, 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 the havoc that was wreaked in each one of these families' lives. So I know it's a hard watch for some, but I'm, I'm happy that you got to meet the people who you may otherwise have not gotten to know. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a good way to say it. Just, just before we end, I do know you guys would love to have advice from these people. Uh, and I would love you to give advice to actors who are struggling, who are having a difficult time in their lives, and are waiting for that role like you received with Glenda, and like you received with Jeffrey. How do you keep your spirit alive? Because you see, it's, you know, you've had some good times, bad times. You've never been on the SAG Award before, and now you're here. So, uh, how, do we keep it? how do we all continue to persevere? What do we do? How do we keep going? <laughs> okay. Now lean in, because I'm about to I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to tell you I'm about to tell you what, what it is. Okay. First of all, you gotta know the difference between the call on your life and a hobby. Those are two different things because it's going to approach how you move in that thing. Now from the time it is, it is written on the canvas of your imagination to the time the thing is manifest, that's the meantime. And in the meantime, baby, it's mean. It's mean in that time. So there is a, there is a stick to itiveness that you have to have because that's going to try you. It's going to try to knock you off to see if you have the fortitude to get over here to the end where the promise is. Now, you have to put in the work. Do not let this new generation fool you and think that everything that is, um, you know, where you can just get cast off of something and, you know, be in a house or be in a group or, you know, do a challenge. It is it's acting. That's different. That's being a personality. Now, if you want to do that, know that. But if you want to act, you study. You learn your craft so that when you show up, you are fully present to that thing. And it is going to cost you something. I'm going to let you know that right now. It's been a lot of days that I crawled across the Linoleum crying, having to take three babies to an audition. But guess what? You pull up, and you push through, and you never look like what you're going through. Yeah. And that is, that's the formula. That is the formula to the thing. And when you are crying and you are down and you are struggling, do it and then get up. Because you can go there, but you can't live there. Do you understand what I'm saying? You still got to get up and send that picture out. You still got to get up and self-tape. You still got to get up and go and go get the thing. So you can feel what you feel, but do not stay there. And you have people in your corner. You surround yourself with people who are going where you're going. Because when you hang out with people who are not doing what you do, you're going to, you know, which one of these is going to be like the other? Association brings about assimilation. So you hang around people who do the thing that you want to do. And baby steps forward is still progress. There must be a reason you continue to do what you do. There must be a reason you don't see the one claim or big house or fanciness. So what is the reason you keep going and keep finding these different characters and grabbing onto them? and making them so real? Gosh, that's a really good question. I, I, I think it's the, uh, I think it's the, um, I 
don't know. It's it's sort of the, the, the challenge of it all, the obsession of it all, the working on it, the, 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 the continually thinking about it and trying to better it and what can I do and getting in a creative flow. I, I, I can't think of anything better than when you get in that zone and you're just you're just experimenting and playing around and seeing what works, what doesn't, chasing after something and um, um, not getting it or getting it. Um, it, it's 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 always a challenge and it's always different. Um, I, I will say to what it's a really tough act to follow. <laughs> but, but I I did I did notice that when I started to really focus and prioritize the work, I I started when I was 15 and I was playing around a lot and partying and having fun and not really applying myself. Um, and then. All of a sudden, I thought, shit, I'm getting older. I need to really start focusing on this. Um, and I did that. And once I did that, I started to work more. I started to actually work and get jobs and, and, then, and then get into the minutia of the characters and the parts and acting. And what is it? And this is so weird what we're doing with the camera and all these different things and, and really breaking it down and trying to figure out what it is. Um, and now I'm just completely obsessed and in love with it. And I can't stop. It's uh, it's really uh, amazing. So um, yeah, I, I would say, <laughs> I always said maybe don't stay out at the party and do those extra lines. <laughs> maybe go home and memorize. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. That's all I have time for. We appreciate you.